This is Mindset for Success with your host, Dr. Leslie Knudsen. Each week, she will interview women entrepreneurs to explore the unconscious psychological struggles they faced as they build their businesses and how they overcame them. Here's your host, Leslie Knudsen. Welcome, Melissa. I'm so excited to have you as a guest today. Oh, thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here, Leslie. Thank you. So, Melissa, you are the founder and CEO of Alexandretta Transportation Consulting, the only female-owned transportation consulting firm in the United States. And you are also a recognized subject matter of expert parcel shipping and global leader in parcel trucking, ocean, and air freight consulting, and have saved clients over $1 billion since the starting in the, since starting in the parcel industry nearly 25 years ago. Um, Melissa, as you know, it takes a lot to be a successful entrepreneur. And business acumen, of course, is important, but we rarely talk about the psychological issues that women can face to achieve that success. And I've sort of referred to these as this negative and sometimes persistent thoughts that can create doubt, undermine success, can destroy self-confidence, risk-taking, decision-making, and really just one's own greater happiness and satisfaction with life. So I wanted to kind of start today um, with your busy um, journey to becoming an entrepreneur, and if you could tell us a little bit about what you did, why you did it, when you did it. Absolutely, yeah. Um, it, it has been, as you said, a, a long journey to entrepreneurship. Even though I feel like I've been on the road since since kind of the beginning, <laughs> I, um, you know, I remember um, being eight or nine years old and and thinking to myself that I wanted to have a business someday. Um, and I, I mean, I remember it very distinctly. Um, but the journey uh, has taken a very, very long time for me, um, because I did not actually start uh, my business until three years ago. So um, well into my 40s, um, before I took the plunge. Um, but you know, as, as most things, everything in life, I guess, is a journey. And um, after I finished school, I um, you know, I went into corporate America, um, partially for the stability and partially for you know, learn, learning certain skill sets and, and also kind of to just determine my path. I, I was an international business major and, you know, knew I liked gl complex global things, but, you know, I fell into transportation, um, you know, early in my career and, and spent um, 10 years, you know, one of the major carriers um, working in sales there um, and then uh, switched over into consulting in the same space um, and spent almost almost 10 years there as well um but but towards the end of of that consult that part of the consulting arc you know i just really um realized that if i was going to have my own business which was still really really important to me that um you know i needed to pull the trigger so um you know there was not uh you know a female owned resource in the marketplace and you know i felt that that was something that was you know, so important and, and, and most definitely needed to be there. Um, and, and just the, the hands of time pushing me and, and all the circumstances being right, that that's kind of all what came together that, you know, um, enabled me to get on to the journey of, of having my own business. And what was important to you um, about being the first female um, business owner in this field? You know, after 20 some years in the industry and it being so incredibly male dominated, I mean, when I started out, I was often um, the only female in the room. I mean, we're talking about like a room with hundreds of people in it. I would be mm -hmm. the only female. And um, those were those were some lonely days. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, flashing forward, you know, another 20 years and still looking around and going, OK, well, we're less than 5 percent of the people in the room. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, how important diversity is in the marketplace. Um you know, and wanting to empower women and empower diversity, that it was just incredibly, incredibly important to me that, um, you know, I start Alexandretta so that we had a female owned resource in this space in the industry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it sounds like it was exciting to yes. be 
first. Um, were, did it feel like that it was a risk? And if so, how did you manage it? Yeah, I mean, it definitely was exciting and it definitely was the right thing to do, which I knew, you know, to the core of my being. But yeah, it definitely felt like a risk too. I mean, there was definitely, I, I would not call it imposter syndrome. I mean, you know, I believe that I deserved a seat at the table and was capable of having a seat at the table. But there was absolutely, a, you know, this thought that I don't fit in and mm -hmm. a, a kind of a temptation to hide a little bit, like hide who I am. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those were definitely some conversations with myself and, you know, my trusted circle at the beginning, you know, how you know, how apparent is it going to be that Alexandretta is female owned and you know what about our logo and our font colors and appealing to whom and this and that and so there were a lot of conversations about that um, at the beginning of the journey for sure. And how did you take care of yourself whether it was financially or emotionally and before you set up your business did you have a plan did you reach out to experts to help you figure your way forward? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm fortunate to have a really strong circle of support around me, um, you know, from my, my family, my husband, my children, my friends, um, you know, fellow women who are successful um, business owners in their own right. And then I also had um, like a professional network of CPAs and, uh, you know, attorneys and, and, you know, folks that could set up my corporation. So I didn't have that hard labor of well, how do I know if this is the right trusted advisor to assist me on this journey? I, I had friends in those positions that I knew very well and knew their capabilities really well. So mm -hmm. that really eased the pain. Um, definitely had a financial plan. Um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to invest in real estate over the years. And so was able to fund the business with some proceeds from, um, you know, a real estate transaction. Um, and so those things really eased, eased the road into entrepreneurship mm -hmm. right because you there was there was mental stability that you were okay mm -hmm. protected. Yeah. so yeah. make a plan for you um sounds like it was an important way to start your business with the most mental stability you could have yeah i think so i mean you know i'm i certainly waited until i was in my 40s I and mean, I, I had the period of time where like i was a single mom and i'm i can assure you i wouldn't you know, that wasn't the right time, particularly for me, you know, the time I mentioned this was the right time for the reasons I mentioned. Yeah. Um, you, you've talked about when opening your new, when opening a new business, it's critical to be able to embrace the unknown and plan for the future. Have you ever felt like you were unable to embrace the unknown or the future in business? And if so, what did you do and what advice would you give young entre entrepreneurs on how to obtain these? Oh my goodness. I mean, I think there's, <laughs> I mean, I think that unknown piece and the risk taking piece, I mean, I think it's always there. I mean, it's something that nowadays I embrace it and run towards it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like I had a discussion this morning about, you know, potentially hosting a podcast. And once again, it was like, I don't know so many things about that. Um, but then instead of being scary, that's like a very exciting thing. It's like, oh, oh, I don't know this. How exciting. I get to learn how to do these things. Um, mm -hmm. So it's definitely a mindset um, shift. I mean, I, I did not have that level of confidence, um, I'm quite sure, in my 20s and 30s. I actually, mm -hmm. um, I've, done, I've done quite a bit of personal development work. And actually just yesterday in the house, I found a list of, uh, attributes that I had written down myself about being worthy and, you know, simple things, you know, I'm intelligent, I'm in caring, I'm integrous. And, and it's so funny because like not worthy obviously was a big deal for me once upon a time. And it mm -hmm. so completely does not even resonate with me anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, that it's, it's kind of just fun to look back at that sheet of paper and, so it's, it's, it's incredible to look back and see how much progress one can make if you, you know, if you put in the hard, the hard effort. Looking backwards and being the woman writing, I'm, I don't feel often self-worthy. And now what has changed for you? I, you know, I, there was a lot of work that, has, you know, there's a lot of work that has gone into making me the person that I am today. Like I said, a lot of personal development um, mm -hmm. work, a lot of, 
uh, peeling back the layers of the onion to see maybe what was holding me back in the past, which obviously once upon a time was I didn't feel worthy. Um, mm -hmm. And and so just practicing, you know, practicing with um, those concepts and knowing who you are, you know, it, you know, at least uh, my journey has, has brought me forth into, you know, who I am today. So it also sounds like age has really been a factor in terms of you being able to open your business three years ago mm -hmm. and, feel, um, I don't know, excited even by, um, an, the unknown and planning for the future, whether it be a podcast tomorrow. And yeah. I think that it's that young young entrepreneurs can't get there, can't have that kind of solid platform when they're first starting out as, as young people? No, I think they can. I mean, I think it depends on where someone is on their personal journey and their personal spectrum. I mean, I, when I was younger, didn't necessarily have some of the support that I could have had or would have liked to have had. And so I, I think there were a lot of things that I had to work through on my own. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, certainly experience is an incredible teacher. Um, I don't think that, you know, someone necessarily needs to, to wait and move along the journey. Um, you know, they can certainly do it uh, much earlier in their career. And I, and I think there's just so many, there's so many more resources available now today. I mean, there's, there's women's groups, there's the internet, um, you know, there's podcasts, there's so much information that someone can fill themselves with now, I think, to propel themselves so much um, faster along the path, if that's their intention. Mm -hmm. You talk about having a sense of integrity of doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. What do these mean to you? And what do these personal values have to do with your success, do you think? Oh, goodness. Yeah, I mean, integrity is huge. I mean, I've always told my kids because I believe it so much it's like is you know it's doing the right thing when no one is looking and mm -hmm. if you can lay your head down I always used to tell them if you can lay your head down on your pillow when you go to bed at night and you can feel good about yourself then you know you've done the right thing and mm -hmm. so you know that's what we do here at Alexandretta I mean it's it's all about doing the right um, thing it's one of our core values here and I mean I think that is absolutely a necessary ingredient for for success um, at least is how I define it, because, you know, my clients and the people that are, are part of the team, you know, know that we're always working to do the right thing. They know that they can rely on us. They know that we're working on, you know, win-win solutions. It's, um, it, it enables a lot of deep trust. And, you know, I think that's where great relationships flow from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in, after after being in the business, the transporting business for these 25 years, you told me that you feel like you've mellowed a bit and are less rigid in how you think you should act with clients. Can you talk a little bit about this change and um, why it why you were more rigid at the beginning and why it feels like you can maybe be a little bit less rigid now? Yeah, I mean, um, I you know, I think we had discussed a little bit that, you know, business in general, I think, has loosened up, a, you know, in the last 10, 15 years. You know, it used to be no Jean Fridays, then it was Jean Fridays. Now we're all at home with our slippers on and, you know, <laughs> Zooming, uh, you know, during a pandemic. Um, but, but to speak more directly to the question is, um, you know, I think that same period for me in, in the late 20s and 30s when I didn't necessarily have that confidence or that self-worth I think I just kept myself more business 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 and you know was like well you know I'll be very professional and um you know honest and integrous and all those things but if I just you know put my professional face forward and keep my personal life separate I think I just thought that's how business was meant to be mm -hmm. done back, back mm -hmm. then and you know of course we're you know still professional today still integrous today but mm -hmm. You know, very relaxed when it makes when it's appropriate. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, certainly if I'm presenting to you know board members and a team of twelve and don't know everybody, you know, it'll be pretty you know buttoned up in a in a loose, relaxed way, I guess. But for my regular clients, I mean, you know, we talk about each other's families and you know we talk about what you know what our wins are and what we're you know concerned about. I mean, it's just a very you know close set of relationships that you know where the personal and the professional does you know, run together. And, and it's so funny how it all works out because I mean, I've had clients now who 
have been wanting to do business, you know, I'm very grateful for it, you know, for 10, 15 years now. And it's Mm -hmm. because we care, we genuinely care about each other. And Mm -hmm. so that's, you know, that's been the the path. And also it's sort of been my experience that when you're younger to put down those boundaries between work and business is also means that you don't have to be so emotional in some ways in the business. If you're keeping everything out that you're able to kind of go in, be professional, enjoy that, feel strong about that, feel like you're mm-hmm. doing something, and not feel like you're mudding the waters. And then as you get older and you feel more worthy, mm-hmm. then it's kind of easier to be a little bit more relaxed. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I'm certainly very grounded in who I am. And, and it's odd because I've always known who I am. So it's mm-hmm. like, well, what's the difference? But there is somehow this very uh, instinctive, you know, I know who I am. I'm very relaxed and you know, confident about it. And it just lets me be. Mm -hmm. And then you can just, you know, bring your authentic self forth. And it's, um, Mm -hmm. it's really, uh, it's really a gift, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Let me ask you this. The internal critic often comes to us in moments of difficulty, stress. It it can make someone self-doubt and impact decision-making. Have you ever experienced this? experienced this in the 25 years you've been working and what can you share with our listeners of how you were able to repair that situation um, of difficulty when it came up for you? Yeah, definitely. Um, You know, I've had it described as, you know, uh, you know, picking like the hammer up and hitting yourself with it, you know, with those internal thoughts of I can't do it or I'm not worthy or I'm not good enough or fill in whatever negative phrase that would be for someone and yeah I mean I definitely you know had that period where that would be kind of my go-to or or I can't or you know I'm not sure you know I'm not sure is a decision also to being indecisive because you don't trust yourself um Mm -hmm. so you know for me and my 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 path that I've taken I I spent a lot of time after my divorce you know working you know through, you know, personal development courses. So, I mean, I still remember the facilitators, you know, talking to like a group of us and saying, you know, put the hammer down, you know, stop beating yourself up with this mental hammer, you know, tell that voice inside to, to shut it. (laughs) And so, um, you know, again, it's something that seems so distant now. I mean, I don't have that negative chatter come up very often. And And it, when it does, it's, it's very, very easy. It's fleeting, you know, nanoseconds, you know, it, it, it's, um, it usually goes away on its own or it's, you know, I can just redirect myself to, oh, that's really exciting or, oh my gosh, you know, what a great opportunity, that kind of thing. And once upon a time, maybe you would have dramatized it, I mean, not dramatize it, but it would have been hard to deescalate it. Sure. Absolutely. Yep. And now it's easier in some ways to deescalate it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Not only does it not really come up almost, almost, almost never, but when it does, like I said, it's just very, very fleeting, very, very easy to dismiss. Why is it so important for female entrepreneurs to find their own tribe and what advice would you give them on how to find them? And then the question that I always think doesn't get asked enough, which is what is exactly, what do you need from your tribe? What is it that you're looking to sort of Uh, bring into your life as a resource well that's a lot um why is it important um well I mean I think that like attracts like you know universally speaking so um you know if you're in a in alignment with who you're doing business with or you know um who's on your team things are going to be a lot smoother and you're going to have a lot less transition um, than if you're, you're not in alignment. And I don't mean, you know, you have to believe in every single same thing. I mean, it's, it's kind of like marriage. I mean, it's like you might have different opinions about sports teams or food, uh, you know, what you like for dinner tonight, but the core values are the same. You know, those things like the integrity, the honesty, um, you know, those core values are, are really key. I mean, I think, you know, when you have your tribe, it's important to have those core values. It's, it's essential to have those core values um, in alignment. And, you know, it, it's, it's a lot easier, I think, to find those things nowadays because there are so many resources like we talked about, you know, a few minutes ago. I mean, there's so many, I mean, just women's groups, women, professional women's groups and 
you know, um, there's, there's some for people just starting out. There's some for women who are really established. There's entrepreneurs networks. There's networks for people who are doing like multi-level marketing. I mean, there's so many places that one can reach out now and, and find, find support. And, you know, I really resonate towards, um, people that are, you know, similar interests, similar likes, et cetera. So it's, it's a lot um, easier to do nowadays. Mm -hmm. And as far as the importance of it, I mean, A, these are people that you're spending huge swaths of your life with. So right. it's good to be enjoyable. Um, but it's, it's important. Um, you know, I, I mean, I certainly look for someone, um, you know, people who will hold you accountable people who will be authentic and open and honest. I mean, you don't want a feedback tank where, you know, it's like, yes, 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 yes. Right. Even though they're thinking, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we have open, honest communication at Alexandretta. So we know that if we're saying, oh, can you, can you change that PowerPoint deck and, you know, move this, this, um, you know, image around and change the font size, the person who's doing that work is not taking it with, well, they don't like my work and I'm not right. appreciated it. Oh yeah, that's fantastic. Right. We can work together to make this even better. Two heads are better than one. And it and yeah. and part of my you know the focus of my podcast is to sort of you know, let's say destigmatize those people who do beat themselves up because they feel like they're being criticized when actually we're just asking you to change the font and it's no big deal about you. Mm -hmm. And kind of you know the, I think that's the other thing about have, finding a community that you feel comfortable with where that you know sort of like what we're doing today it, it, that things that feel uncomfortable you can talk about uncomfortable psychologically you can talk about and say you know it's not a make or break it's just about kind of finding the right rhythm for you and the right people to surround yourself so you get the support yes i mean there's that saying you know life begins at the end of your comfort zone right. and it right. <laughs> true oh, true well. words there Absolutely. Um, before we end, um, what are the top three things a female entrepreneur needs to be successful in your opinion and experience? Um, I mean, definitely a, a positive mindset. You know, a lot of the things that we've been talking about today, um, I think that foundation um, is absolutely critical critical to have. I mean, you can know everything about your craft, but if you don't have the mindset to, you know, go forward, um, that's, that's huge. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I think definitely, uh, a financial plan is, is, mm -hmm. is hugely important. It doesn't mean you need to be flush with cash. It just means you need to have a, uh, a, pl a plan for moving forward so that you can, you know, support the business until it's, it's truly established. And mm -hmm. then, um, I do believe, you know, having, the right tribe around you. Um, and if you're a solopreneur, that means, you know, friends and family who will support you and say, yes, you can and be a sounding board. Mm -hmm. um, and if you do have, um, if you do have a team, you know, those like-minded, you know, core value aligned individuals that mm -hmm. will, you know, only make the, only make the team stronger. Absolutely. All great, great uh, suggestions and recommendations. I want to thank you, Melissa, so much for sharing with our listeners today your motivation for why you chose to be a female entrepreneur and also how you overcame some of the psychological challenges that you encountered during your inspirational journey. Where can people reach out to you to learn more about your work? Um, they can certainly go to our website, which is alexandrettaconsulting.com, or they can reach out to me at info at alexandrettaconsulting.com. Great. Thank you so much for joining me today, Melissa. Great work, Leslie. Thank you so much. This podcast is brought to you by Women Entrepreneurs Global, the first startup studio and digital DIY startup platform for women. For more information on her guests, this podcast, and many other female founder programs, please visit womenentrepreneurs.global. We believe in open and non-stigmatizing dialogue about the hidden psychological difficulties experienced by many successful entrepreneurs and highlighting the strategies used to overcome them, such as the fear of failure, of not being good enough, and that loud, chattering internal critic is critical to helping other founders achieve success. 
Please join her next week for more Mindset for Success stories. That was Dr. Leslie Knudsen, and you can drop her a line at dr.lesliekanudsen at dr.lesliekanudsen.com.